Hi, I'm Tony Fowle with another workshop video. This time I'm going to show you how I got this Harbour Freight tumbler to actually work. First of all, have a look at this before and after. It's quite clear the difference between the two. One, the abrasive media uh, is just jumping about a little bit. In the other, you can see there's a well-defined and much greater movement, which is what we want. Up until this COVID uh, thing came along, I used to make several visits to the US each year. And I often had some spare luggage capacity when I was coming back. I had a favourite Harbour Freight store which I used to stop at on the way to the airport and generally fill up my luggage allowance with various uh, uh, cheap tools. Well, you only get cheap tools in Harbour Freight. And on my last visit, I got this tumbler. It would just fit into the space I had left in the suitcase and it wasn't so heavy that it put my allowance over the weight limit. For those who are unfamiliar with the vibrating type of uh, tumbler, this is the object of our attention at the moment. Basically, we have a bowl. Uh, we put uh, one or two kilograms of uh, some sort of abrasive media in, along with some relatively small parts that we want to polish or de-rust. De the bowl is spring-mounted and it's agitated, uh, well, the idea is that it's agitated in a circular fashion which generally moves the parts and the media against one another. As bought, this one didn't do that very well and uh, this video is uh, all about showing the very simple modifications that I did to make it work pretty well. So let's delve inside and see what makes it go. This is the tumbler part and down here we have the motor which causes it all to vibrate. If just quickly prepared this in advance. The easiest way to see how this works is to look at the diagram that I've prepared here. Uh, this, this is the bowl. This piece you can see the raised piece in the center. This is to give it something for the abrasive media to move around it. We've got a motor in here which is connected to this platform underneath with four bolts. At the bottom of the motor, there's this out of balance mass, which as it rotates, that causes this to vibrate. This was the actual mass that came with it. Now, as soon as I opened this up and looked at it, I thought, oh, they've got it all wrong. And I saw a way of fixing it. Well, this is what I found when I took the bottom off and I immediately knew that this wasn't a very good way of doing it. As you can see, the out-of-balance mass is mounted at the bottom of the machine and we'll see why this is not the best way of doing it. When I say they've got it all wrong, we just need to consider a little bit of physics. Here we've got this out-of-balance mass rotating around which generates a rotating outward force on it. So as it rotates, it tries to make the bottom here go like this. But we've got two main masses in the system. We've got the mass of the motor and the mass of the bowl with the abrasive media or the tumbling media. So the center of gravity is somewhere around here. If you apply a force to an object, away from its center of gravity, two things tend to happen. One is it will tend to make it rotate about its center of gravity, like so, but because we're pulling this way, it will also tend to move the center of gravity this way. So as it's rotating around, it will be tending to do this sort of motion uh, about a point somewhere around here. This part won't actually be moving very much sideways or 
in a circular motion. It's just the part from here will be tending to. So it's only part of the bowl that's really moving about. And we saw that in the uh, video with it working. So I thought, well, what we need to do is to move this up close, as close to the center of gravity as we can. Because then, if you've got something here and you provide a force at the center of gravity, instead of it doing this, because we're not pulling the bottom out, it will tend to move that sideways. So it's all going to go round in a motion like this, which will agitate the bowl much more. Now I prepared a little demonstration, which I hope will work, to try and show this effect I'm talking about here. I've got this piece of solid bar. The centre of gravity is marked about here. I'd really like to do this in outer space where there's uh, no significant gravity but uh, I've got to put up with gravity so I've got it suspended on this wire to give it the minimum amount of support. If I hit it down here which is as if the out of balance mass was at the bottom then I think you can see that it, it tried to move like so with the center of gravity not moving too much it, it swung from side to side but that's because of it's mounted on this uh, wire from the ceiling now a similar thing happens if i tap it at the top the same sort of motion you can see it's going like this so in a rotary case it would be this sort of motion now let's see what happens when i hit it at the center of gravity see there's no twisting about the center of gravity if it wasn't for the the fact that this was hanging down if we were in free space that would just simply move like this so in the rotary case that we've got here it would be moving the whole assembly all of the motor and the bowl would all be rotating like this so that was what i wanted to do well when i looked inside it turned out that this wasn't so difficult because if we look in here the base has four bosses on well I've just drawn two of them here but the motor itself was more or less symmetrical if it was turned around like so except for the shaft coming out and the mass that was fitted to the shaft. So if I turn that upside down I would have placed this close to the region where I want it, close to the centre of gravity. But this was mounted very very close to here. There wasn't very much room. So I wanted to get as much room as possible. So I shortened the shaft way down. But then as I've drawn it here the tip of the mass would have fouled on these four bosses that were there. If I just simply cut that off and shortened it, then I would have lost a lot of the out of balance effect and there wouldn't have been as much tendency to make the whole thing vibrate. But I looked in my scrap box and I struck lucky, I found a piece, I think it was about 12 millimeters thick steel, and it just happened to be shaped like this, with a hole in. Now this radius would just fit inside this boss. See what I mean by I said I got lucky? Uh, now this wasn't symmetrical up here, but that doesn't matter because it just means instead of uh, uh, the... the um, uh, center of gravity being, I don't know, here, say, it was just over here a little bit. It was still going to produce the out of balance forces. And when I worked it out, the effective out of balance mass of this funny shape piece was almost exactly equal to the original one. So I knew that I'd be playing about with forces that were very close. 
to one another. We seem a good place to start. With this piece from the scrap bin, this whole thing here was much shorter. Still not quite short enough, but what I did when I turned this up the other way, I just put some short spaces in there. Looking at it now, I'd say that they, they were about 10 millimeters or so. That was enough room. So I moved the motor down about 10 millimeters, which gave me the space for this new mass to fit in here. The out of balance mass was occurring very close to the center of gravity, which is what I thought would be the best way of doing it. That's basically what I did. I turned the motor up the other way, put four spaces on here, about 10 millimeters thick, cut the shaft, put a new rotor on it, and that was it. A very, very simple modification. And you saw in the comparison how it was running so much better. There are many types of media that you can uh, use in a vibrating tumbler. Uh, just two examples here. There's these triangular ceramic pieces which are used for uh, polishing but they're uh, very useful for deburring small machine parts and give it a nice even uh, finish. For example uh, this uh, piece here is uh, machined from aluminium but it's got a nice smooth even finish all over and there's no sharp edges on it they've all been nicely uh, deburred. So, so that's what you choose this for here There's some triangular type pieces which came in this. This is a rust cutting abrasive and it uh, says on the tin that removes rust from threaded fasteners without rounding the edges. Well, I think you've got to have a fairly coarse thread for this to be able to get in and clean out the, the threads very much, but it's fine for de-rusting purposes. Here is some more footage of different cases being tested. If you uh, like this video or any of the others, please share, subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the uh, button to receive updates of any other videos. Thanks for watching.